exciting day this one is and that wonderful JD the CEO of Kenya diaspora media there with a beautiful song where Donny guy love is ultimate God is love but today we are going to talk on a topic of well-being and safeguarding my name is Esther from Leicester so welcome and let's talk about this topic of well-being and safeguarding so a shout out to Marie for writing the notes Marie Wright a former colleague of mine yeah, at Stevenson College thank you so much for the beautiful notes about overthinking and that's what we'll be looking at this morning otherwise tell me where you're tuning in from so that we can be able to share with more friends and also be able to know where you're tuning in from this is also experimental on my timeline so that I, I would be able to know how much or how many people I'm able to reach out with this topic of welfare or rather well-being and safeguarding. For those who are joining me, my name is Esther from Leicester and thank you so much for joining in and we'll be able to communicate with you and you and you and you on this topic of well-being. So without much ado or rather without beating about the bush, 
I'm going to go straight away to the topic of the day. And you may ask, why is Esther talking about the topic of well-being and safeguarding? It's one of the topics that is closest to my heart. It's one of those topics that I've always wanted to talk about because I believe in well-being. Even the framework itself, the one that I'm using, the spices of life, is to do with the well-being of the spiritual person, the physical person, the brain, or rather the intellectual person, all right, and then the currency or the communication or the commercial kind of, the way we deal with life, that's what C stands for. Yeah, the commercial, the communication, the way we do life. And that song that I was playing earlier is to do with love. I, re I believe that the currency of this life or above money, above everything else should be love. Then I do talk about the emotions and I talk about the, so the social, social well-being. So... Today, I want to uh, concentrate on the well-being and safeguarding. We will see how much we'll go with it. But before we go on, I have a question for you and for you and for you. This will be our starter question. And the question is, which one is your favorite or what is your favorite room in your house? What is your favorite room in your house? And as I continue to introduce the topic, you could tell me what is your favorite room in the house mine i could say <laughs> it's the bedroom because i love sleeping but no because i don't spend as much time there i spend more time in the kitchen i don't know whether it's because i love food <laughs> or is it because um that's where i do most of the work there i do the cleaning i do the cooking i do the chilling just uh have my drinks there and it's also next to my garden, so I'm able to look through the window and be able to see the garden. And I'm able to sit outside there also and chill when I'm having something to drink or to eat. So which one or what is your favorite room in your house? That will be our opening starter question. And I will tell you why. I will tell you why as we progress. So welcome to this <laughs> Kenya Diaspora Media Program. And... My opinions are the ones that are aired on Kenya Diaspora Media. So if you have anything against or for Kenya Diaspora Media, I am part of that team. But I'm airing my opinion as well as airing what knowledge I have to be able to share with you. And in the process, hopefully, we will be safeguarded and also our well-being will be improved. So let me know where you're tuning in from as we join in, as you join in, as we join together in this discussion. Like I said, I know I like beating about the bush sometimes without much ado. I'm going to go to the topic and I will talk about the subject that I want to be able to talk about today. I've been talking about it recently, but I thought let me now start afresh and bring it on the page. <laughs> So that you can be able to share it with you and you and you, a wider perspective of people. So the topic itself, the specific topic of the day is how to stop overthinking. And I would ask a question before I go there. Do you overthink? Do you know someone who overthinks? I do. I do overthink sometimes. But overthinking is not as productive because if we don't have a balanced thinking then it can consume us it can consume our time and in the process it can lead to mental health issues and it can also lead to other problems and it can waste a lot of time so today i want us to be able to discuss on how to stop overthinking and that is on the well-being and of course it touches also on the safeguarding and then another shout out to another former colleague of mine stevie she was so much encouraging us to be talking about safeguarding and she used also to send us the mental health awareness and also the well-being in mental health so this one i lift up to you stevie thank you so much point number one on how to stop overthinking and you can also contribute your own ideas on the same topic you can tell me whether it's productive or not productive so number one put into a wider perspective that thing that you're thinking about put it into a wider perspective and ask yourself will this thing matter in five years will this thing matter in five months will it even matter in five weeks 
five days, five minutes. Once you have put it in the wider perspective, whatever it is, you will be able to know whether it is something worth of a thinking. And why am I asking you about the room that is your favorite one? Personally, I say the kitchen is one of my favorite room rooms. And the way I do that is I, I take it as a symbolism or a parallel of this kitchen of our mind and the kitchen of our hearts. So the kitchen, the mind and the, <laughs> the mind and the heart to me are the kitchens of our lives because whatever we cook up here, whatever we prepare here and whatever is going inside the soul or the heart of person, a person, that's what comes out. That's what is played out. And that's why I'm talking about the kitchen of my life. And I'm thinking about overthinking because we do it here and it comes from deep within. Everyone has a person that they talk to in their head or in inside of them. Yes, and that's what now I think whatever we do to build our bodies, to, to, to kind of uh, spend time with uh, and also to, to be able to help the other members of the family, it's something that we cook up in our minds. Whatever we cook up in our minds, positive or negative, is the one that will be able to either help us or help another person. In the same way, whatever you cook in your kitchen, be it a healthy diet or not a healthy diet, it's the one that will help you. And your family. We cannot live independently. I cannot live as one person like this, as Esther herself, like this. Yeah, I need you, you need me. Within family members, we need each other. And therefore, I am here to say that there is a reason why we should be um, stop overthinking. And one of the things I wanted also to check out is whether you're, you're, you're hearing me, the audio. So you can put a comment there on the chat and let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. So number one of how to stop overthinking is put it into a wider perspective. Ask yourself, will it matter in five years, five months, five weeks, five days, five minutes? And then that simple question can help you to stop overthinking and focus on your time and energy on something that actually matters. So what is it that matters in your life? That's the other question within that wider perspective. What is the purpose of your life? What is it that you really feel like is the will of God for those who believe in God like me? What is the will go, will of God upon your life? Does What is it that really drives you? What is the passion of your life? What is that thing that is worth uh, thinking about? Think about that. So ask yourself those questions. Will it matter? And then if it doesn't matter, then you need to put it aside and think about things that actually matter. Thank you so much, Kendall Hurst, for joining in and watching with me. Thank you so much, Michelle Waldorf, also for joining in. And thank you so much, Neil Hutchings, for watching. And thank you so much for letting me know that you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you so much. Now, number two, this is point number two on how to stop overthinking because we want your well-being to be balanced. Number two, make a short deadline for decisions. Yes, make a short deadline for decisions. That is second is all you need to decide whether you're going to do your dishes or you're going to the gym or you're going to have breakfast or not. Small, small decisions need just maybe up to a minute or 30 seconds. You can be able to decide whether this thing is worth thinking about or doing because thought processes are about the things that either we want to do or not do. For the larger decisions then, that would take normally up to days or weeks to think through. You can use a deadline of maybe 30 minutes or at the end of the day. So you can set those short term goals and tell yourself by the end of the day, this big issue that has been looming and lingering in my mind should be resolved by the end of the day. That is the second point on how to stop overthinking. Number one, we said put it into the wider perspective. Number two, make a short deadline for decisions and it could be up to 30 seconds for short uh, kind of ideas or short um, things that you want to do, actions that you want to take or a half an hour for longer, longer or larger decisions that you want to make. Number three is stop setting your day up for failure. You know, some people wake up and they wake up with like, this is going to, it's going to be a bad day. 
So the tone of the day that they set up could, yeah, be setting them up for failure. So stop setting your day up for failure. Wake up with a good tone. Yeah, read something that is uplifting. And these are the notes that I was given by Marie, right? So thank you. I was given permission to use. Wake up to something uplifting at breakfast. Don't skip breakfast unless you are fasting. That's what I've said in the previous programs. And then try a bit of just something to rejuvenate you, to exercise, to make you awake for that particular day. And then get started with your task that is of priority to you. So then start with your most important task of the day. Uh, we normally tend to say as women that we can be able to multitask, but it doesn't always work like that. We will find ourselves doing one thing at a time at the expense also of the other thing that we think we are multitasking at. So if I'm sipping a cup of tea, that's what I'm doing at that particular moment. When I'm washing a dish, that's what I'm doing at that particular moment. Whatever it is like now, what I'm doing is talking to you at this particular moment. So if there is another idea that is looming in my mind, then <laughs> it's not helpful. It's not helpful because I'll be distracted from whatever it is that I am doing right now. There has been some background noise recently. And out of that background noise, sometimes it distracts me from what I am doing. But for this particular moment right now, it's me and you. And I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to myself as I broadcast this program. So stop setting your day up for failure. Set, set the tone or a good tone for the day. Think positively. I know some people normally brush off this thing of thinking positively. But you see, the problem could be coming from the very bigger problem of overthinking issues. Those issues that you are overthinking can make you go downhill and they become negative but if you are overthinking on the positive side then you need to do something productive out of that as we will see in the fourth point which is become a person of action become a person of action right taking small bite-sized steps will help you to get the task done it will help you to get the task done and get into the habit of doing that. Otherwise, if you don't get into the habit of just taking one step at a time, in the same way we take one day at a time, you know, we can't live in the past. We can't live in the future. We are living today. This is the day that we have as a gift from God. It's the present that you have. So unwrap this day. In the past, I've said that it has a number of things and promises that comes from God for those who believe in God like me. And also there are many plans that you have for the day. So for you is to fill in the blank of this page that you have opened. I say there will be a bit of a background noise, but it's not going to distract me from doing what I need to do today. So one of the things I had said earlier is uh, when you do whatever you do, don't guess that you're multitasking or don't think that you're multitasking. It's not possible to multitask. I also wanted to say that during the doing, because this is now the point number four of becoming a person of action, you need to take breaks in between. Yeah, you need to take regular breaks to keep yourself in focus. Because again, if you pour all your mind into that particular thing you're doing, at the expense also of your thinking process and also of maybe the life in general you know it's a holistic life i said spices of life the spiritual physical intellectual commercial or currency and the emotions and the social aspect of life if you spend all your hours on that very thing that you're focusing on then it will be also jeopardizing other things that also may be needing your attention so take regular breaks they say uh yeah, take a regular break and this will help you to think more clearly and more decisively. And it will also uh, help you in also focusing on other things that need to be focused on at that particular time. So minimize also your daily input of uh, excessively checking your phone, excessively checking your email, excessively 
doing things that clutter your mind. And what I'm trying to say on this point number four is become a person of action by taking small bite-sized steps for those things that need to be done and also in removing the things that could be distracting you, the things that don't need to be done. So make it a habit. And I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself as well. Now, sometimes people procrastinate. Yeah, they carry forward things that are essential or are important or are priority. And in so doing, they jeopardize their own lives. And sometimes you become overwhelmed because of the points that you have been carrying forward, carrying forward and carrying forward. So it's important that uh, you don't overwhelm yourself because of the things that need to be done. If something needs to be done, like we had said initially, right? We had said at point number one that put that thing into a wider perspective. If it needs to be done, let it be done. We had also said in point number two that make short deadlines for the decision. So if that something needs to be done there and then don't procrastinate do it there and then and then we had also said as you set yourself in doing these things don't tell yourself you're going to fail we are going to succeed in that particular aspect if we approach it in the right manner from the right perspective okay number five all right we are saying realize that you cannot control everything we are not able to control everything in this life we are not let me tell you, when you're thinking about something 50 times, when you're thinking about something 20 times, when you're thinking about something I don't know how many times, it's a way of trying to control everything. But you're controlling it here only in the thinking of process. I mean in the thinking process. You're trying to think and overthink and overthink about it. But in actual sense, you're not doing number for you're not becoming a person of action you're not doing anything about that thing that you're thinking about so it doesn't help it doesn't help to think and think and rethink if that thing is not becoming productive in any way but i know one of the things that uh, marie says is that we are fearful of making a mistake that's why sometimes we think and think and think and think of a perfect way of doing this thing but sometimes it's okay to do it and fail. Why? Because making a mistake means that we can learn from that as long as it's not fatal. As long as no one has died, it's not fatal, then we can be able to learn from the mistake. Uh, John Maxwell says we fail forwards. So we fail, but we fail forwards because as we move forward, we learn. One of the examples I've given in the past is when you observe a child, when you observe a baby, when it's learning to stand and when it's learning to walk, when it's learning to crawl, the baby, particularly in the standing and in the walking, they fall. They only react if you are looking at them with pitiful eyes or when you're looking at them being there trying to protect them. That's why the, the time they may pretend, oh, I have hurt myself or this has happened. But a child fails forward. They fail then they stand up, they try again, they stand up, they try again. So there's nothing wrong in failing, okay? So those things are part of life success and failure are part of life. They stretch us from the, our comfort zones, they stretch us. And <laughs> setbacks are valuable in learning from all the other things that happen. So if you don't have a setback, maybe you may not be able to learn on how to do something correctly so it's important that we learn from any setback that is coming our way so we have looked at point number one number two number three number four number five where we say realize you cannot control everything i'm going now to look at number six number six says that yes number six is about <laughs> say stop if you can't think straight yeah so it's like saying no to yourself it's stopping if you can't think right you need to be able to stop if you cannot think right so when you settle down for example to go to sleep there's those negative thoughts that are buzzing up in your mind and the best thing to do you can speak to yourself and say no 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 no, no. i'm not going to think about this right now i will do it tomorrow if it can wait till tomorrow let's say you want to go to the loo 
<laughs> that can't wait until tomorrow. So don't think about how long can I hold this wee in my bladder. No, no, no. If you need to go to the toilet before you sleep, go. But there's some other things that you may be thinking about and they, are, they cannot be done there, right there where you are. For example, thinking about shopping tomorrow. Thinking about something you didn't place correctly earlier on. That one doesn't help you. So you can do that tomorrow. How do you drop that thought? Keep a notebook at the side of your bed and write it down. All right. Write that thing down. And then when you wake up in the morning, if it's something to do with shopping or something you wanted to uh, do later or tomorrow, then it can be done tomorrow. So you need to put that thing aside. And then also another way of stopping yourself from overthinking in the night as you go to sleep is you can find something that is distracting you from that thought, but something also that is calming you. So don't go for the music that goes boom, 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 but rather go to the music that is calming you, the music that is bringing quietness, the music or audio books you can read, and then anything that will help you to relax and drop off to sleep. Okay, this is not new technology I'm giving you. This is not new knowledge I'm giving you, but... I'm trying to share some of the ideas that have been shared with us so that we can be able to stop overthinking, okay? Then when in the morning you have slept and you're fresh or refreshed, then you can be able to look at your notebook. Sometimes you find that that point you are really worried about or concerned about, it doesn't really matter. But sometimes if it's something that needs to be done, then it will be among the filling in of that new leaf of that particular page. It could be something that matters that needs to be done then you can be able to do it. So I'm saying, um, I've said point number one, put in the wider perspective. Number two, make short sure deadlines for the decisions. Number three, stop setting your day up for failure. Number four, become a person of action. Number five, realize that you cannot control everything. And number six, you can say no, or you can stop. Yeah, if you're not thinking straight, you can stop. You can tell yourself no, so that you can stop overthinking. And number seven, don't get lost in the vague fears. So teach yourself to ask yourself honestly, what is the worst that could happen? When you have answered that question, spend some more time, a little bit more time to think about the action you could take if the worst were to happen. Now, remember these notes or these points are connected. There was the one that we were taking action. And there's this other one that we can also think that you're going to fail. The one for taking action, you can be thinking you're going to fail. Or, or the other one is also when we want to take control of everything. No, when we are not able to do all those things, it's important that yeah we don't get lost into the fears because sometimes people don't do things or they don't act upon their thoughts because again of fear of failure or fear of the mistakes that they can make. So... Remember, ask yourself, what is the worst that could happen? And if that worst happened, again, like I normally say, as long as something is not fatal, it can be corrected. Most mistakes can be corrected. So remember, the worst that could be realistically happen is usually something that is not as scary as what your mind is running through and telling you and telling you and telling you all the time. Some people have said fear, the letters F-E-A-R stand for fear false expectations appearing real that's what it stands for that's what they say false expectations appearing real so that thing that you're scared of that thing that you're afraid of that thing that you may be telling yourself you're going to fail the fear that you have may not be real fear it may be just false expectations something that's that is appearing as if it is real but in actual sense it's not. It, or alternatively, even if you do that thing that you're doing and you fail, like we had said previously in the previous points, then you can be able to look out at what lessons have I learned in these things. Thank you so much, J Joseph Nera, for listening. Thank you so much for joining in. Karibu sana, asante sana. Thank you so much. The next point is uh, we are trying to... Look at the ways we can stop overthinking. Those are the points that we are looking at. Let me put the title back here for those who are joining now can know what is it that Esther is talking about. We are looking at well-being and safeguarding, but today's topic is 
how we can stop overthinking. That's the topic that I'm looking at at this particular moment. There we go. So I'm moving on. Yeah, some form of exercise uh, are good for you and it helps. You know, if you can go for a walk, particularly when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling like you've, you've filled your mind with so many things, you can go for a workout, you can go for a walk. That's also an idea that can help you to come out of overthinking. So when you get that fresh air from walking, when you go to the gym and see other people, the way they're working hard, working at their bodies, and you yourself can start also doing that, it can clear your mind and enable you to feel more decisive. And it can help you to become more focused and to be able to make better decisions. So exercise is another one good point that you can be able to do, and it will help you to stop overthinking i have lost count of the points that i'm doing i think i am at number eight now that was the exercising and working out and obviously now if that was number eight i'm looking at number nine now which is have good quality sleep this is my favorite one right <laughs> i make sure i have set my fitbit to uh, seven hours and this is the best part of for me at nine of o'clock when my alarm rings it doesn't ring to wake me up it rings to tell me esther it's time to go to bed so it is surprising how good sleep is a common neglected factor when it comes to developing a positive mindset and in also calming your mind because if you learn how to let go like i said earlier write a note of the things that need to be done put them aside when you put them aside <laughs> you can pick them up tomorrow so good sleep is important. It gives you a refreshed mind every day. It gives you a good way of starting the new day very well, very fresh at a blank new page. And you can be able now to wake up with a positive mindset. This is a new leaf. This is a new chapter of today. I've slept enough. When I Personally, when I look at my Fitbit and I think, oh, you didn't score very well. You didn't score 80% and above Esther. Then my head starts start straight away tells me that I need a nap. And that also, we go back to where we set ourselves to fail. You remember I had said sometimes we set ourselves to fail. So it takes me back again to that point of, I am tired. Yes, I can't be able to do much today because my mind is already telling me I am tired. I need to go and sleep. Good. Have some good sleep. It's very important that you have good sleep. So keep the bedroom cool. Don't try to force yourself to sleep. Instead, as uh, we have said before, try to use audiobooks. Try to use reading if that's what helps you. Try to use calming music if that's what helps you to go to sleep. So don't force yourself to sleep. Sometimes we used to put the sound of rains. Yeah, you know, the African rain and the jungle rain and it does help in calming because to me when i was growing up that rain when you just had the sound of rain in the night it just calmed you to go to sleep yeah remember to put your phone away and switch it off yeah. uh, because these ones may increase the buzzing thoughts in your mind because when it goes ding and ding you want to just pick that other notification to be able to read it Okay, another point is this one. Reconnect with the present moment. Yeah, slow down. Walk slower, talk slower. Esther sometimes talks very quickly. Today I've tried and I'm talking slower. And of course, I walk slower. That one, you don't need to tell me. Uh, it's just the talking sometimes I talk too fast. And sometimes I want to do everything within one day. So slow down, yeah. Disrupt and reconnect. Disrupt and re reconnect. Remember we had said initially that you need to take breaks. In between, you can be able to change as good as rest. In between, as you focus on that thing that matters, uh, you can distract yourself from that thing by just stopping disrupting and then reconnecting so that at least when you restart you are fresh it's like, just like the same way we reboot our phones yeah so when we use our phone sometimes we put it back into the charge sometimes we reboot it restart it so that it can start afresh so reconnect with the present moment because that's what really matters but when the overthinking yes starts yeah disrupt it because sometimes it is distracting us from concentrating on what really matters at that particular moment remember point number one we had said concentrate or focus on the things that matter 
And the way we focus on the things that matter is by reconnecting with the present moment. And that's why slowing down, walking slower, talking slower can help us to refocus our points there. Even restarting, but not restarting as in rethinking more, but it's just disrupting that thought and telling us stop. Like we had said in another point that you can tell your mind to stop and concentrate, focus on the one thing that really, really matters and do that one. It may take you about one to two minutes to fully focus on what is going around you. It may take one to two minutes also to focus on what it is that you are kind of focusing on on that particular day. Use your senses, you know, the eyes, <laughs> the smelling, the tasting and all that. Use your five senses and also the sixth sense, the instinct. I normally say use those to sense this particular moment and be full in that particular moment. We are moving on. We have another point. We say spend time with non overthinkers or people who don't overthink. If you are an overthinker and then you spend time with people who overthink, then the overthinking will be intensified. So spend as little time with those people who overthink or those people who drain your energy because they could be telling about the same issues. One thing, one thing they keep on thinking about it. So step, spend time with less time with those who don't overthink because the people who are overthinking can drain your energy. Find ways <laughs> to avoid them and seek out people who think positively or talk to them so that they can start thinking positively. You will find that your thinking moves to a more positive outlook and less from the negative thinking and it will influence, influence both of you positively, you and the person that is your friend if you bring in just focusing on the moment, focusing on the things that need to be done particular that particular time. By the way, I forgot to say, when you think about things, when you decide, you must take action. No, I had said about taking action. It's not just about thinking because thinking and thinking and thinking does not necessarily solve any problems. So I would like to encourage you that you think about that thing that, that really matters Make a decision and then act upon it and then work with other people who don't overthink so that these things can be done rather than just making them uh, stay there in your mind. Now, last but not least is here. Be aware of the issue. Be aware of the issue. Be aware of your challenge. Be aware of those things that are really putting you into that spot that is making you think and overthink and overthink. Uh, being aware would help you to break the habit of overthinking but if you think that you will um, you'll just remember to stop overthinking then you're not telling yourself the truth so create a reminder and put it where you regularly see it even if it means putting it in your phone i normally put my points on my phone and it does help me to remind myself something that i'm focusing on and once i have focused on that thing it will help me. Thank you so much, Neil Huching, saying you are right. I had the best sleep today for weeks and I feel renewed because, Mr. Huchings, I believe you have stopped overthinking about the issues that have been disrupting you. I live with you. You're my husband. So I know I know some of the things that you overthink about. So hopefully this will help you to stop overthinking. Yes. If you have any question, please comment below here and you can be able to ask that question as I'm coming towards the end. Remember I had asked question, a question at the beginning of the session. What's your favorite room or what's your best room or where is your favorite room in your house? So if you've not answered that question, I would appreciate if you answer that starter question. I had said mine is the kitchen and I am recapping because the kitchen of our minds, the kitchen of our lives is our minds and our hearts. That's where the good things and the bad things come from. So whatever we are thinking or overthinking about is what will overflow in this life. And that's why my kitchen, yeah, I said it's the favorite place because that's where I cook. That's where I prepare food. And in the same way, my mind or my heart, the inner person, that's where we cook all the things that come out of our lives the good or the bad that's why i'm using the analogy or a symbolism of the kitchen so for me just for doing the a quick recap of the points i said how to stop overthinking 
Put it in the wider perspective. Give yourself a period of time. Yeah, five months, five years, five weeks, five days, five minutes. Only concentrate on the things that matter. Focus on the things that really matter that need to be thought about that particular time and focus your energy on that. And I had said also make short deadlines for decisions. Don't dwell on something for too long. There are those things that just need 30 seconds of deciding, but there are those that need maybe a full day and there are those that need maybe a half an hour. So just make your, give yourself short deadlines for decision making. Stop setting your day up for failure. Don't say negative things about yourself. Instead, look at the things that will uplift you. Listen to people who will uplift you at the beginning of the day. Think positively. Think of the things that will bring joy and gladness in your life. I think that's the same thing. All right, become a person of action. So don't just think, don't just decide. When you decide, yes, do it. So become a person of action. That was the other point. Remember that you cannot control everything. Even if you think about it 50 times, however times you think about it, you cannot be able to control everything. So just choose to control that very thing that you need to control at that particular time. Okay, you can say no to your situation. You can say now, no, 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 no. I'm not thinking about this thing right now. Because it can be done tomorrow, it can be done another day. So you set it aside, write it down somewhere, and you can deal with that at a later stage. I mean, don't be fearful. Yeah, don't get lost in fear. Fear is a false expectation appearing real. Don't be scared of failing. Don't be fearful of failing. You can fail forward. Failing is about learning from the mistake that you've made as long as no one has died, as long as it's not fatal. All right, so you can fail forward. Success is what we all aim for, but in the process of succeeding, there is also great room for failure. And we have always room. I mean, they say the biggest room in anybody's room <laughs> is room, yes, for learning more. Yeah, there's always more room for getting to know more. And in the process of failing, yeah, we can be able to learn from that. <laughs> Okay, work out and have some exercise. It, it can give you a refreshing and it can help you to refocus on whatever idea that it is that you want to think about. Have good quality sleep. It is important that uh, you have sleep. By the way, when I was looking for, there's always room for, yes, learning more. <laughs> there's always room for improvement. That's the word I was looking for. Among the rooms in people's life, there's always room for improvement. So even in your sleep, if you've not been sleeping well, if you've not been learning how to wind down as you go to sleep, there's always room for improvement in doing that better. Reconnect with the present moment, slow down. Yes, take your time in whatever it is that you're doing. Focus your points there, focus and stay focused. And spend time with people who add value to your life, people who are not overthinking. If you are an overthinker, Try to spend less time with other overthinkers. Instead, spend time with people who act upon what it is that they think about and then solve the problems that need to be solved. And then last but not least, I said be aware of the issue. Be aware of the issue. And yes, when you're aware of the issue, you can be able now to know that this is the issue that I need to be dealing with and how to deal with it using the previous points that we have written about or talked about. So thank you so much for joining me this morning. <laughs> I'm going to call it a day now as I have already recapped. If you have any question, please comment here. I am aiming to be talking about well-being and safeguarding. And as I talk about this topic, hopefully it will help you. Maybe one particular point could help you. And maybe you could help another person in a similar way. <laughs> so I'm going to play a song uh, while I wait and see if there is any question. And then after that, we can be able to call this first lesson here on my timeline. We can be able to call it um, lesson number one. I have already recorded some other programs on the Kenya Diaspora Media. You can have a look at that and join in with the Kenya Diaspora Media whenever I'm broadcasting there for us to be able to expand on these. In the future, the next topic I'll be talking about is to do with self-esteem and confidence. It seems like the same thing, but it's not the same thing. Again, this will be courtesy of Marie Wright. 
she'll be giving me those notes or rather she has consented that I use the notes on self-esteem and confidence. So I'm looking forward for you joining in. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining in. And here is a song for closing in as I check whether there are any questions or any comments for today. Otherwise, karibuni sana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Here we go. Let me uh, upload the song here for us.
Thank you so much, JD. Thank you, Jeremy Damaris, our CEO, for that beautiful, beautiful song about love. About love. Now, I see I had a few comments just before I leave the studio. Okay, Mr. Neil Hooching says, my favorite room is this garden. It's not really a room, but it's part of our home. So I had asked him, <laughs> why is the garden the most important part of yeah the rooms or rather whatever part of the home why does he like it okay he has not responded yet hopefully he can be able to respond on the chat here and tell me why that is his favorite room okay i can okay he had said that he can hear very loud and clear and he had said he slept very well yes i was saying sleep is one of the most important ways of stopping overthinking and being refreshed now i will be looking at the comments later and hopefully we can be able to recap them in the next program and i can be able to know why mr hutchings is saying that the garden is his favorite room so we'll be looking forward to that at another particular time otherwise i'm gonna call it a day <laughs> thank you so much for joining me thank you so much joseph also thank you so much ignatius for joining in and i will be yes delighted if you continue sharing with your friends i think this is an important topic i'm telling myself about overthinking and also it's an important topic for you hopefully about overthinking and how you can stop it it's not good for you it's not healthy and the whole program i want to be running for the next 10 days god willing is about well-being and safeguarding and then i'll be looking at different topics on how we can have well-being and how we can safeguard our lives as well as safeguarding from other different angles today i've looked at the well-being of our mind of our hearts the kitchens of our of our lives the kitchen of our lives otherwise if you don't have a question okay he said i like the garden because it is a relaxing place bright and airy yes particularly in summertime it's a beautiful place to be in the garden so thank you so much for joining in and thank you so much for your support until another day huh for now it's goodbye from esther see you soon thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you so much asante ni sana asante 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 ni sana kwa kuungana nami asante thank you thank you thank you so so much for joining me thank you asante ni sana asante asante thank you thank you thank you hopefully i've stopped streaming by now